You know, I, I question what I was getting myself into before I started recording this, but I was just like, you know what? Just go with it, come what may, whatever like mob of hate trolls comes my way, I can handle it because I'm better than them. Um, <laughs> okay, so for my first official video, what better way to start off my YouTube career than literally jumping right into the middle of the biggest, most intense drama that has happened on this site in years. Great decision, right? What could possibly go wrong? Um, for those of you who have been living under a rock and somehow don't know about the ContraPoints drama, there are plenty of other videos covering this topic. I'm not gonna sit here spending like five, 10 minutes summarizing everything. Essentially, a YouTuber uh, named ContraPoints, also known as Natalie Wynn, has been accused of being non-binary phobic because of comments she made on Twitter and because of working with someone named Buck Angel, who has been described as an aggressive true scum. The hate mob I've seen descend upon her is honestly one of the most horrifying things I think I've ever seen. But I don't want to sit here talking about her specifically because I feel like other YouTubers have done a much better job of adequately talking about the drama, talking about the things she said, breaking them down, breaking down the criticism, and essentially coming to a conclusion of whether or not she was in the right or the wrong. I think we've done enough of that. What I want to do instead is I want to spend just a few minutes talking about my issue with something called cancel culture. Now, I know, I know some of you are already cringing at that, but it is a very real problem that I believe we're facing right now. And whenever someone says something that we find slightly questionable, we essentially burn them to the ground like Daenerys Targaryen, which do we not know how to listen to people and try to come to an understanding? Um, regardless, if you engage in toxic behavior to where whenever someone says something that you find disagreeable, you begin to verbally and emotionally abuse them, you don't give them a chance to explain themselves, you go after their family and friends, you dox them, you send them death threats. Hello, Lindsay Ellis, Philosophy Tube, Thought Slime. Does that ring a bell to anyone? You essentially make their lives a living hell because you couldn't find it within yourselves to be mature enough to either not say anything or try to understand where they're coming from. You abuse them until they either leave the site or they issue some sort of apology that's not genuine because they don't know how to handle this much hate being thrown at them. That's abuse, y'all. Do you not understand this? It doesn't matter to me whether or not you disagree with what someone said or not. If this is how you're going to treat them, that is abuse, plain and simple. And in spaces especially like ours, whenever we're a part of leftist Twitter or YouTube, whenever we're a part of the trans community on Twitter or YouTube, we're supposed to be better than this. Because we exist within a progressive space, we're supposed to have the ability to listen to one another, to have a conversation, to see that nuance in each other's words, and be able to come to an understanding of one another instead of sitting here and just yelling nonstop because we refuse to just open our ears and our minds. And from my perspective, I've been seeing this happen more and more, especially on Twitter. It seems like what's beginning to happen more and more is just we're becoming consumed by this idea that we either have to be right or that to be considered a leftist or to be considered a proper progressive, you have to check off boxes in a wildly unrealistic and unattainable checklist Otherwise, you won't be accepted. You will essentially be excommunicated. You won't be good enough, regardless of the good you may have already done for the community. Because do I really need to say this? 
but Natalie Wynn has done so much for the trans community. She has brought so much understanding to a much wider audience. She's de-radicalized people from the alt-right, and she's helped bring so much more awareness of our issues to a wider audience. She has done more for our cause than almost any other online figure, but because she said problematic things in the past, because she worked with someone like Buck Angel, even though she explained her reasoning for that and apologized for her mistakes, we've essentially left this mark on her and said, I don't care what it is you did in the past. You did these few things and you are no longer acceptable within this community, which is something called purity testing. Now, some people, again, don't like hearing that, but where else do we see purity testing being weaponized against marginalized communities? Hmm? I'm sure fascists would never do something like that, would they? <laughs> Must be just like a silly coincidence. But we really need to understand how incredibly toxic and harmful this behavior is because one of the worst things I've seen happening is we're essentially dividing ourselves in a time when we need to be unified, when we need to be able to work together to understand one another's perspectives and not let these systems of oppression, these um, transphobic, homophobic hierarchies that are being pressed upon us, the fact that we would sit here and continue to just yell at each other and essentially pretend that nothing else exists. Because I don't know if you're aware of this, but the American government doesn't particularly like us. There are a lot of people in this country who don't really like queer people that much. Uh, religious people, uh, conservatives, uh, bigots in general. Um, there are quite a few of them. And what we're doing is we're making it easy for ourselves to essentially be vanquished. That might sound a bit dramatic, but that is what we're allowing to happen right now. And it's happening in both uh, leftist and queer spaces on Twitter, and it's happening in those same spaces on YouTube to where it's nothing but a yelling match. There are times where I've felt like I'm standing in the middle of a firing squad and any little thing I do will cause one of them to pull the trigger and that'll be it for me. And that's not good. We should be able to talk to each other about whatever. We should be able to open up about our own personal experiences, regardless of whether you are a binary trans woman, regardless of if you're non-binary, agender, regardless of if you're a cis person, but you're gay, bisexual, pansexual, if you're outside of the community, whatever. We should be able to talk to each other like normal human beings and not essentially burn each other at the stake just because we aren't emotionally mature enough to handle whenever a different perspective is thrown at us and we realize that our worldview is being challenged. We have to be adults about this. And it's really disheartening watching, especially my community, the trans community, fall prey to this because I have so much love for this community. I, it saved my life. And I've wanted to do everything I can to try to just give a little love, a little positivity, a little understanding to the people who have brought me through so much. To watch the people who are my family fall prey to this is just, it's, it's scary. It really is. Because what you need to ask yourself is, what do you think would happen if you treated your friends or family this way? if a situation came up whenever they said something that was maybe slightly disagreeable, that you didn't maybe fully understand, you thought was offensive, what do you think would happen if you started to harass them, you started to verbally abuse them, you started to say the most awful things in the world to them, you tried to isolate them, you tried to dehumanize them, what do you think would happen how do you think they would react to that? Why is it that you choose to do that 
instead of either keeping to yourself or opening up about these things in a healthy way. Because this is not just hurting other people, this is hurting you. Allowing that kind of hatred to consume you is only going to lead you down a dark, dark path. I just feel like where we really need to draw the line is if we feel that something needs to be said, we need to respect everyone's personhood. It doesn't matter how much you disagree with someone else's worldview or opinion or things that they say, we have to respect that we are still human in the ends. And there are better ways to open up and talk about our problems instead of essentially setting everyone on fire and leaving no one standing but those who are in your echo chamber. Because if you're only surrounded by people who think like you, that's essentially fascism. And that is the very thing we are trying to fight right now. So I just, I don't know. It's, it's one of those things where I don't really have any solutions. What I do want to say is we need to stop yelling first and thinking later. We need to be more open with each other. We need to be able to just have these conversations to say, hey, what you said rubbed me the wrong way and this is why. And then have someone else say, okay, cool, let's keep talking about it. Because how else are you going to learn about someone else's perspective if you don't listen to them first? I just, I know we're better than this. You are all better than this. Let's build a kinder, more understanding movement. That's what this space should be all about. And we should all be fighting as hard as we possibly can for that. And I know we're capable of that. Every one of you there, you are capable of that. But you have got to leave these reactionary uh, ideals in the past. We have to be more measured. We have to think reasonably. And I know it's hard. I know that you want to lash out. You want to say exactly why certain things hurt you or offend you, but there are healthier ways to do that. Okay? So let's all just, just breathe. We're gonna make it through this. We're gonna be okay. Let's be better. I know y'all are all better. I love you. You're beautiful. Have a good night.